So we've talked about the column, we've talked about the row. In this section, I like to talk about the list view. And the primary difference between the list view, the row, the column is that while we had to do some configuration to get the row or the column to scroll items off the screen, the list view is really designed to do that by default. You can certainly use it in a scenario where there are uh, just a, a couple of widgets on your screen, uh, but it's configured out of the box to be able to handle a lot of widgets. When you start actually loading data from databases, uh, it, the list view has the additional advantage in that it only loads the widgets that are on your screen. So if you have a thousand items in your database and you only have room for five on the screen, the list view is only going to get five from the database and only when the user starts to scroll will it go and get more. So once you start using a lot of widgets, you start using a database, uh, a list view is an obvious choice for that. But with a smaller number of widgets, we as the developer, we have to think about which one's the best approach. So let's see how a list view would work here. So first of all, a list view is going to be more concise uh, in this situation. So we don't need this single child scroll view. We can get it out of here. We can say remove with widget. We only had to add that because the row by default wasn't going to scroll off the screen. We can replace the list, the row with a list view. And none of these properties exist on a list view. Now, if we say that, what we're going to see is a couple of things. One is the list view is horizontal by default. And the other is that it will actually by default stretch uh, contents like containers from right to left. So that's a little annoying in this scenario. We could configure it so it isn't doing that uh, with some additional steps. But uh, in reality, you're probably not going to be putting fake boxes inside your list view anyway. You're going to have something more like text. So let's work with that. So let's get rid of all these containers. And let's give ourselves a text view. And it's going to say, this is a line. And so we can more easily get this off the screen. Let's add some style. And so we'll use a text style widget to make the font much larger. So we'll say font size is 50. And we'll add a column. We'll save that. And why don't we get rid of this, uh, this debug paint too. So I'm going to go to the widget inspector. And I'm going to unclick this widget paint. We don't need that anymore. So let's get rid of that and close the widget inspector. And I'm going to copy a few more of these lines. So I'm going to option shift down on a Mac or alt shift down on a Windows device. All right. And we can see we have overflowed the screen. Maybe a few more. And we never hit this black and white error because the list view by default was expecting the possibility that this would flow off the screen. And so by default, we've essentially built a column that has no bounds. It can go off the phone and we don't have to do any extra configuration. Uh, what if you wanted this to go right to left, just like a row with a single child scroll view? We well, can do that with a scroll direction property just as we did with a single child scroll view so that would take an axis and ver uh, vertical is the default so if we change this to horizontal then now all of these widgets are flowing in a right to left manner no overflow we didn't have to do anything with that it was expecting that and we're good to go now you might say to yourself now why would i ever use a column why would i ever use a row if i just use a list view then i will never overflow uh, and if I do, then the scrolling behavior will kick in. And I did mention in both the column and the row that there were some consequences to uh, removing that overflow error by allowing it to scroll. And I'd like to explain that better in the next section by introducing the concept of bounded versus unbounded widgets.